part two of how to really invest in gold and silver. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I really hope you watch part one of my video. If you didn't, it's gonna be right up there. Check it out. In fact, I would stop this video, go back and watch that one before you watch this one, okay? But thank you for joining. I'm so glad to have you here. I've been so jacked to do this uh, video for you. And last time I started to make the case for at least some investment in gold and silver mining stocks, especially, you know, in your 401k for retirement. Uh, make sure I, I should probably give you uh, another quick little disclaimer. I'm not a pro professional financial advisor. Please be very, very careful. This is just for fun. And I hope you get something out of this. All right. Do your own research. As you might know, gold is up 50% over the past four years. Hmm. But did you know that gold stocks have beaten the S&P 500 during those four years? <laughs> I didn't till I started researching it. And did you know that gold stocks beat the S&P last year in 2019? And they beat it in 2018? And the last time gold was on the move while gold stocks kind of languished a bit, like this chart shows, was back in January 2000. Some of you millennials might not recognize that time from an investing standpoint, January 2000, but that was the bottom of the gold bear market and the absolute top of the NASDAQ bubble, okay? So this is a great contrarian indicator, folks, and I'm a contrarian investor. I think we're poised to take off soon with precious metals mining stocks. So I, I ended the last video. I said I would show you how major and junior mining stocks can make you two times or three times or five times or whatever, a lot more for your investment. And I'm going to show you that right now. Let's just say that uh, gold is, is uh, $1,600 an ounce. I think right now, uh, as of uh, recording this video, it's over that. I don't know, $1,640 some dollars, whatever. So let's say it's just let's, let's say it's sixteen hundred dollars an ounce, okay. And let's also say that a gold mining company can effectively mine their gold at a cost of fourteen hundred dollars per ounce, okay. So sixteen hundred dollars an ounce for gold spot price, and fourteen hundred dollars that a mining company can effectively pull the gold out of the ground. You know? So that that's their what we called the all-in sustaining costs, or AISC, per ounce. So the purpose of this admittedly simplistic example, this mining company makes $200 per ounce in profit at current prices, all right? Now, if gold drops to $1,400 an ounce, this, this company's profits, that's it, they're gone. All right, they, they, they don't make any profit. That's when it can get dicey, folks, for those juniors. That's when they can go belly up quite easily, all right? But if gold goes up to, say, $1,800 an ounce, their profit doubles to $400, even though gold prices have only increased by 12.5% from 1600 to 1800, okay? So if gold goes even higher, let's say it hits a uh, $2000 an ounce. That's a $600 per ounce profit or three times what the miners made when gold was at $1600 per ounce. Isn't that amazing? See how that works? See how fast that can shoot up on us? Uh, and, and, and just, just in case you think that $2,000 an ounce is, is just not realistic. I just read an article that showed a, uh, a Citicorp analyst calling for $2,000 an ounce in just one to two years. All right. So that's a big bank calling for that. And I think, I think it's quite likely we'll see that in a couple of years. 
So, so just imagine a three times return on investment in your 401k. Okay. Now, <laughs> all right, before we start throwing money into the majors and junior mining stocks, I need to tell you about the third type of mining company to consider investing in. This final category of mining stocks is where I want my money in right now. Okay, not all of it, of course, just $10,000 I'm going to invest. And it is royalty streaming companies. So rather than operating mines themselves, like the majors and the juniors, royalty streaming companies finance the mines, okay? They provide the cash up front to develop the mine. They're, they're the bank, if you will, for the mining companies. And in exchange for this financing, they get a piece of the action once a mine becomes operational. You know, either they um, uh, get a percentage of the uh, mining output or uh, they can buy a certain amount of gold and silver from the mines way below market prices. It's a super sweet deal for these guys, all right? And it's also a great deal for the mining companies themselves. Man, m- miners love to get money from these royalty streaming companies because if, if, if they just get a regular loan, they're stuck with it. No matter what the price of gold and silver does, all right? It can go up, down, doesn't matter. They're stuck. But, but by getting money in exchange for a, you know, a royalty streaming deal, their debt is tied to the price of the metal they're mining, okay? In other words, um, it's like their, their debt goes up and down with the price of the metal and with their profits. So it's less risky for them. It helps the majors and juniors hedge their debt, okay? Now, what about you and me, all right? Investors, what, what, what does this matter to us, okay? These streaming royalty companies are less risky, all right? They're, they're, they're just a less uh, a risky way to make money compared to the actual miners, okay? They have a sizable chunk of the uh, profitable upside of the miners themselves, but with much less downside risk, all right? And unlike miners, royalty and streaming companies have actually historically outperformed the price of precious metals. All right, check check out Royal Gold's performance right here. Whoa, pretty good, huh? And and they were actually paying dividends during this time. Okay, so so the profit was even higher than what you're seeing on this chart. All right, that's Royal Gold. It's it's one of the big three streaming royalty companies out there, and. Frankly, it hasn't even been the highest performing one of those big three. The other two, all right, are Wheaton Precious Metals and Franco Nevada. All right, now that last one, Franco Nevada, hmm, <laughs> it's one of the best performing gold stocks in history. All right, they gave investors like around, I think it was 400% returns since they had their IPO like a decade ago. All right. And they've dramatically outperformed the price of gold during that time. And, and, and again, that, that doesn't even include their dividends. Check out the chart. Whoa, they're doing great. <laughs> now, of course, the trade-off is you're probably not going to get uber explosive growth that you would get with a mining company, a true mining company, you know, like the, a junior, especially juniors, all right? But, you know, that's okay with me. All right, like I said, my time horizon is short and I'm getting on in years. I I do have some risk tolerance here, but not a lot. So uh, I that, that really interests me, or Franco Nevada, actually, I should say, interests me a lot. And oh, by the way, they happen to be debt-free. Love that. <laughs> okay, so... These three have the largest portfolios of all the active uh, royalty streaming companies, all right? But, but there are a bunch of smaller up-and-comers worth checking out as well. There's uh, a Cisco Gold Royalties, uh, Sandstorm Gold, 
Metalla Royalty in streaming, and Mavericks Metals. All right, these these are quite a bit younger and have you know more money lent out to mining companies that are under development. Okay, so they're obviously a bit riskier. You know, not as risky as juniors most most of the time, but definitely not as safe as the big ones like Franco Nevada. <laughs> However, if their investments work out, these these small ones, uh, their potential upside is huge. Okay, uh, of the four of those little ones, those little streaming royalty companies that I mentioned, I like Sandstorm Gold the best. Also debt free. A big plus for me, as I mentioned before, Sandstorm holds a huge stake in the hot maiden gold development project in Turkey. This development project is expected to be one of the most profitable gold mines in the world when it goes into production, I think sometime in 2022. And even if you assume that gold prices stay flat, all right, they don't go up. Just flat, you know, you know. Trump gets reelected. The the dollar stays strong. Uh, the faux economy stays on life support with regular Fed injections. Whatever. <laughs> Even if the gold price doesn't rise, the hot maiden mine is expected to nearly double Sandstorm's cash flows when it comes online. Double. Wow. <laughs> that sounds really good to me. Uh, now, of course, there's some risk, obviously, with Sandstorm. You know, I mean, they're very concentrated in this Turkish mine, all right? So depending on how this operation goes, we're most likely going to see some exaggerated impact, right? Either positive or negative on Sandstorm stock. So remember that, all right? It's, it's all about risk and reward, people. So let's talk about an investment strategy, okay, um, with mining stocks. I talked to SoCal Silver, that gentleman in our uh, our community that I really learned a lot from. He's someone far more educated with mining stocks than I am. And he believes that very soon we may hear stockbrokers or, or analysts just completely trumpeting gold mining stocks. Ooh, it'll be the hottest thing, right? You know, it's going to be a race into these stocks because all the shows, television shows, all the uh, you know financial shows are going to be saying, "Oh my word, these are hot! Get in!" And that's you know going to cause a shift. People are going to say, "You know, I'm going to sell these stocks and get into gold mining stocks or gold and silver mining stocks." And where the herd will probably go is into gold and mining stock uh, ETFs. All right. ETFs. That's that's where they're first going to go, or or so does SoCal Silver think. And the two most popular are GDX and GDXJ. The first index is primarily about majors, and the second juniors, hence the J. <laughs> okay, that's how you can remember it. Um, and what and what SoCal Silver's strategy is, as he tells me, is that when he sees the ETF start to pop. Okay, when people are shifting their investments in their IRAs, 401ks, wherever, into these gold mining ETFs, he plans on selling his majors and buying into the juniors in order to get in on that price pop. All right, he'll do this when it hits some price target that he has set for himself. All right, which is a good idea to do. So. With that strategy, he he might even be able to exchange like like two majors with six or more juniors. All right, um, sell out of the majors as it starts to go and jump into the juniors. All right, get ahead of the explosive rise in price. With that strategy, he's hoping for a ten bagger, a ten times his investment in a relatively short period of time. That would be amazing. Of course, it's predicated largely on a rise in the price of gold and silver, something that, again, I strongly believe we're going to see in a few years. Now, at this point, <laughs> I just feel compelled to say again, be careful. Gold miners are known for their ability to over leverage, speculate wildly, destroy their capital, Okay, this type of major junior mining strategy takes a long time to learn. I'm no expert. I'm just giving you what SoCal Silver says that he's going to do. 
He also recommended some really cool ways to gain some of that knowledge. Um, I mean, he gave me a YouTube channel called Mining Stock Education with a guy named Bill Powers. Um, uh, he gave me a website. Uh, it's called Exploration Insights. It's a newsletter, I think, about juniors. Uh, another uh, newsletter that he subscribed to or subscribes to and likes is... Um, uh, junior Minor Junkie. I think that's what it's called. Junior Minor Junkie. And it's run by a guy named David uh, Erfel. So I'll include these and other links in the description below. And if you have a few places that have helped you, a few sites online, maybe a YouTube channel uh, that I and others in our great community can learn more about how to invest in mining stocks, please let me know right down there in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. So again, what is Yankee going to do? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm heeding the advice of Ray Dalio, the head of the largest hedge fund in the world. He recently said that mining stocks could be the best investment over the next two to three years. I'm going to invest $8,000 of my self-directed IRA in one or two streaming royalty companies, okay? And $2,000 in a major, okay? And we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll chronicle it right here on my channel, Yankee Stacking. I'll be upfront and honest. I'll let you know over the months and years ahead whether I make money or I lose money. But again, this is, this is my way of really investing in gold and silver. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I've learned a lot and uh, I really would appreciate it if you, again, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, frankly, I'm amazed at how many people watch my videos and are not subscribed to my channel. Well, maybe I haven't earned it, but you know, I really would appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope as always, your day is a-okay. <laughs>